As a part of this worship service, we will have a time to reflect and participate in the sacrament that our Lord Jesus has given to his people. Please have ready some bread and some wine or grape juice for this time to reflect and to remember. Hello and welcome to worship. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements that I do want to share with you. Um, we are still in flux regarding our AC. Um, it's working. Uh, you want to come in and join us in the cool sanctuary. We do have AC, uh, but it does look like we're going to have to invest in a new unit. Um, so please keep that in prayer and in mind. Um, a couple, another thing that will be happening is this Tuesday. Um, I encourage you to really prayerfully consider if you're uh, a woman to uh, join the other women, uh, women of the ELCA. Uh, it's not like you're joining a membership or get to learn a secret handshake or do a pledge or anything. You just show up and there uh, is a Bible study that is really, um, I hear a lot of laughter, but also a lot of uh, good things coming forth and uh, wonderful sharing, um, encouraging, uplifting. It, it's wonderful. So um, that's going to be happening at 10 a.m. Uh, this Tuesday. And so if you want to uh, be a part of that, you are more than welcome to attend that. Um, also coming up, just to let you know that over the 4th, uh, near the 4th of July, which will be Sunday, July 2nd, um, that will be the first Sunday that our intern, Lewis Liss, will be here. Um, we have already had scheduled a sort of a picnic thing, a picnic event. And so um, we're going to continue that picnic event, of course, uh, and Lewis and family will be here. So if you want to get to know them, it's a little more casual uh, time. There'll be fun and games. It's going to be a potluck, so if you're able to bring something, a dish to share, um, that would be great, but if you're unable to uh, bring a dish, just come anyway and be a part of it. It will be a wonderful meal. It's going to be following our second service. It will begin probably around 11.30, quarter to 12. So um, if you'd like to be a part of that, we certainly do encourage you to be here for that as well. Um, as far as Bible study, we will continue Bible study for a couple more weeks. And we are still in the book of Hebrews. Uh, again, it's been wonderful discussions and uh, great learning going on. The Spirit is very active in, in motivating and, and uh, shaping us, and so we encourage you to be a part of that as well. Um, and so with that, uh, we will now move into worship, and I pray that you have a very blessed week. If the Lord just touch you in divine, mysterious, and holy ways. God bless you. We continue living our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, touch us that we may touch others in divine, holy, and healing ways. We pray this day that others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to deserve it, that others may come holier than I, that others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. I ask that we observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in praying the prayer for this second Sunday after Pentecost, we pray. O oh God, the strength of those who hope in you, be present and hear our prayers. And because in the weakness of our mortal nature we can do nothing good without you, 
Give us the help of your grace, so that in keeping your commandments we may please you in will and deed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. second Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Old Testament prophet Hosea, the fifth chapter, verses 15, uh, is where we will start and we'll uh, complete the lesson in chapter 6, verse 6. And I guess I have a question um, that uh, helps us understand a little bit about God from our own experiences. Have you ever tried to help someone who... Uh, doesn't need help. They say, I don't need your help. But as you watch or you go, you're going to need some help. Um, sort of what we have going on in our lesson today. The Lord has offered so much to his people and they keep turning his back. They're back on him. To the point where it's like, well, okay, I'll just go to my place. You guys do your thing. And uh, when you realize you do need some help, I'll be here. I'll be here. And then so we hear this lesson. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord. For it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth. And my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice. The knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson for this day comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. It is the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 13. There's a portion that is skipped, 14 through 17, and then 
18 through 26 is what our lesson is completed with. Um, that which is missing, I think, is very important. And just keep in mind that as you hear this, um, what, what um, is missing is, to some extent, the parable of the wineskins. You can't put old wine, uh, new wine in old skins. And in so that's a portion of our lesson that I think is critical for us to hear, uh, but they've omitted it. Um, and in so we hear this lesson. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him and his disciples. So, then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout the district. This is the gospel of our Lord. Hello, it's time for the children's message. Um, hopefully you got to hear our lesson today, because Jesus in that lesson says, you know what, if you're sick, you need a doctor. If you don't need a, if you're not sick, I guess you don't need a doctor, huh? And so it's very interesting for Jesus to say. Um, it's sort of like, he's sort of speaking about this. It's like, um, I have this, this gift that was given to me, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's like, a, um, it came from Hawaii, and it, um, it's, it's, it's broken. It, it's broken. Um, Sort of like sin. sin. Sin, to a great extent, really means not doing bad things, but really sin, it, it, by, without the S at the end, just sin, it sort of um, uh, explains or lets us know that our relationship with God is broken. It, sin breaks our relationship with God and has an effect on our relationship with God. Sort of like this is broken. And so what Jesus is saying is sort of like, um, you want to fix that relationship? Well, then, okay. So it's sort of like me going, okay, you ready? Fix yourself. F fix yourself. Go ahead, fix. Are you done fixing? This can't fix itself, can it? It's somebody outside, like me, somebody outside, somebody that is other than this, has to fix it. And that's what Jesus is saying. Because if, if our relationship is broken with God, we aren't able to fix it. We're sort of like, you can't say, fix yourself. But God does. That's why, that's why the Almighty Lord comes to us as Jesus. So that we may be fixed, so that the relationship may be made right, so that that which is broken may be mended and made right and made whole. And that's what Jesus is trying to convey to us in our lesson today. That we need him. We need a savior. And he is our savior. He's come to be our savior. And that is the best news ever. So I hope you can share that with others. All right. God bless you. Have a great day.
week. I don't know what you got going on this summer. If you don't have summer school, I hope you are doing something constructive, all right? And you be good. We'll see you later. God bless you. Bye. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Join with me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity to consider your word for our life, to hear your word, and may your word continue to enter into our minds, into our bodies, into our souls, into our spirit, so that as we live our lives, this is where we live it from. This is the foundation of our living in our life, is in your grace and in your word. And as we meditate upon your grace and your word this day, through this sermon, we pray, Almighty Lord, that all the thoughts uh, that are, are, are considered in the meditations that take place are pleasing and acceptable in your gracious sight. We do pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the risen Christ of God. Amen. Um, I would first like to offer these words. Um, I do want to read the portion of scripture that is missing from our lesson this day um, because I think it is very vital for us to hear that um, and, and it will be brought up later on in the message. Uh, and so I'm going to share these words uh, from 14 to 17. Those are the ones that verses that are missing from the, the lesson today. And they read as follows. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often but your disciples don't fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins, otherwise the skins burst. And the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. I would like to start our consideration of our lesson for this day, uh, of Matthew. Uh, this new old wineskins, and the old cloth and the new cloth. The woman who is hemorrhaging, the little girl who is dead. I'd like to begin uh, the meditation on this, the sermon on this, um, by first sharing with you uh, um, 
that there was a woman who used to worship with us. I, I hope at some point she does come back. I haven't seen her since COVID. Um, I know that um, um, a very faithful people, very faithful person who wintered here with us. Um, and um, she was a very unique child of God. Um, by social norms and by social standards, um, we can see as you engaged with her, you would be able to note that she didn't quite process things um, in a way that most people do. Um, some would say that she, has, she had a low IQ and she was slow and simple-minded. Um, most of the time, um, she was accepting of this reality. She was aware of her, her mental status. Um, and, and she had difficulty. She struggled with this um, in her life. Um, she knew she was different. She knew she, she stood outside the norms. If you want, if you, if you want to use the, that terminology, um, I, we've set up some norms within our, our social structuring as a society in which we say this person is normal, this person well, is sort of a little different. Um, excuse me. And she definitely was. And she knew it. And she struggled as she stood outside um, those who, who, who um, as she stood outside the public and, and social norms um, of, of ordinary normal people, if I may use air quotes for that. Um, and she had problems maintaining uh, conversations, um, dialogue, uh, communicating. But man, her faith, her faith was incredible. She had a faith that, I'd say, if we're speaking in terms of measuring, IQs, so forth and so so on, I would say that her faith outmeasured mine. Um, I wish that all of us had this woman's faith. Um, and she, she, she knew Jesus. She, she loved Jesus. And, and the thing that, that kept her going in all of her struggles was that she knew Jesus loved her. That she could always go to Jesus. And Jesus would always be there. And Jesus would always offer her comfort and solace and peace. In our gospel lesson today, we have those who are outside the norms of those days, the norms of a righteous life. Many stood outside that understanding of a righteous life. The Pharisees, Sadducees, the leaders, those folks, they had it together. There are others who, eh, come see, come saw, sort of, sort of. And then there was those who were definitely outside, not right with God. Quite evident, overtly evident, just like Matthew, a tax collector. In other words, he collected public revenues to give to the Roman authorities, those who were oppressing, those who were incredibly oppressive upon the Jewish people, to be sitting there collecting from the Jewish people was an abomination. That guy, Matthew, <laughs> he's not right with God, never will be. Got no business thinking he's connected with God in any way. Same with the woman with the hemorrhaging. She's unclean. She can't be active in the people of God and with the people of God. She can't be right with God. She's bleeding. She's unclean. Outside. <laughs> the little girl. She's dead. Anybody touched her, they would become unclean. 
All of them. Not right with God at all. They stand outside the, the, the norms of, of righteousness of the day. Everyone knew it. They, the whole community knew it. No questions asked. And I want you to note, I, I ask that we sort of take a, a look at what these, these three did to become right. I, I, I mean, let's, let's look at that lesson again and see what they did. I mean, did they, they, they crafted their story and their appeal in such amazing ways, didn't they? It was incredible, the logic and, and the experience, the whole, the, 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 wait a second. They actually did nothing. Not one of them spoke to Jesus. The woman thought to herself. The father came on behalf of the dead girl. But Matthew, the hemorrhaging woman, and the little girl don't say anything to Jesus. Certainly the woman seeks Jesus. But she doesn't say anything to him. She just wants to touch his cloak so that she could be healed. She wants to do it stealthily, as a matter of fact. She doesn't want him to know. Only Jesus can make them right. It's only Christ. And, and, and that's why I, I, I share with you the parable, particularly about the wineskins. Primarily because what, what, what is it about the new wine? Out, out of that whole parable, you'll know that the new wine has the power once it's put into the old wines, the new wine has the power to burst it. The new wine carries that which will activate and grow and burst the old because the old cannot contain it. The old laws, the old rituals, the old traditions cannot make Matthew right cannot make the hemorrhaging woman right. She tried everything. The little girl is dead. She's a lost cause. But that word of God comes to them. They may not have even, that Matthew, I don't even know that he's seeking. The little girl certainly isn't seeking. She's dead. Certainly the woman with the hemorrhaging is seeking because she has no other options. But, but that's because there are no other options, because there was nothing that could heal her and make her right. But that word that comes to them in Christ Jesus has the power to transform their very being, their very lives. And they become children of God. They become right with God. Those who are on the outside, who have been cast off as losers, as unright, as sinners, are now made right by the power of this new wine, this wine that fills them, this new wine that, 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 that enters them and does what it's supposed to do. And that is to fill these people, Matthew, the woman, Hemorrhage, the little girl, to fill them with the promises and grace power of God in their lives. And in so they are made right. It's interesting to note that it is God and God alone. It is the Lord, the Lord alone who comes to them and speaks a word. They needed a savior. They needed hope. They needed healing. They needed a new life. And Jesus provides that for them. Jesus gives it to them. Jesus comes to them without them even saying a word. 
and gives it graciously to all three. They needed a savior. And the savior came and touched them with word and deed. A word and deed that has a power to burst that which is old, alienating. I think this is one of the problems with our humanity today. One of the many issues or problems, but this one I think is very foundational. Many people in our world today don't need a savior. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm all right. I haven't killed anyone. I don't cheat that often. I do pretty good. Don't need a savior. And despite that understanding, we look at the history of humanity and the human race. And in its brokenness, we see oppression and despair. We see just horrible, horrible things that human beings do to each other throughout history. Forces that alienate, the forces that destroy and are destructive within us. And we perpetrate it upon others, the greed, the selfishness, the self-centeredness. I would maintain if humanity was able to save itself, you'd think by now we'd save ourselves. And that's Jesus' point. You can't save yourself. We can't save ourselves. That has to come from the one who has given life. There's many people who don't need a savior. And that's what they say. But in reality, we all need a savior. And that Savior has come, and He still comes. Just like in this lesson, He comes and unleashes power into people's lives just by grace. Just through His grace and love for humanity as, 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 a peop as, as, as people, but also as individuals. He knows you, He knows me, He knows that we need a Savior each and every day, and He is here for us each and every day. Saving by the Lord, the, the, the Lord's word that explodes within us to, to, to just get rid of the old is at work within us. And, 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 and it brings us to a new place so that we may see and hear and understand the life around us through the lens of grace of God, through the eyes that Christ has given to us. We are different. We are a different people. We are those who are being saved at this very moment, the salvation of God at work within us. This is what Christ has done for you and for me. He's, he's, he's poured this new wine into our lives and it does have effect. It has power. And as we go about trusting it and living by the faith given to us, this power comes forth. This hope comes forth. This love comes forth. This grace comes forth. And it's for the benefit of humanity. Because Christ has called us to do that. He has empowered us to do that. And you and I live it. Live in it. Live with it. Live for it. And find life in it. Because there is no life without Christ, our Lord and our Savior. For this we give thanks and praise. Amen. Let us now join together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we gather to give you worship and praise. All things are yours, and we can give you only what we have brought into this world with us. It's ourselves. We can only give you our very being. Keep us in your grace. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you come to us and you speak your word. Your word is not empty, but filled with spirit and life. Continue, Lord, to come to us and fill us, even if that means you need to empty us first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, your word is filled with healing and peace. There are many in our hearts and our minds who are in need of healing of mind and body and soul and spirit. We pray this day that those who need healing hear your word and experience the peace that comes in knowing that you care for your people corporately and individually and bring healing and peace to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, there are many in our families who are traveling now to attend graduations and weddings and family gatherings. Keep all travelers safe and provide joyous reunions of family and friends in other parts of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this and that which remains on our hearts, we commend into your care, gracious Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. It is in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. The body of Christ is given to you. And then after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ is given for you. And now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us join now in the Lord's Prayer, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go now and go in peace and let us serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.